Yeah. We're going to sketch the graph of f of x equals 2 to the x. Since this is our first one, what we're going to do, are you on? Yes, you are. What we're going to do is plot some points. What we're going to do is we're going to pick some values for x. The typical values you pick would be like from negative 2 to 2. So we're going to have 2 to the negative 2. which is 1 over 2 squared, which is 1 fourth. We're going to have 2 to the negative 1, which is 1 over 2 to the first, which is just 1 half. What's 2 to the 0? One. Yep. 2 to the first. 2 squared, we have to plot these five points, we're going to go a different color, let's go orange, no I know you're like Mike, that graph you chose is horrible, I know I did that on purpose, uh, 1 fourth, very small, 1 half, not as small, so 1 fourth at negative 2, that looks good. One half and negative one, right there. Zero one, looking good. One four, uh, one two, and two four. So plot those five points. Oh, I missed that point. I'll just make that bigger. That's good. No one's got to know. So, if you ever hear the phrase, something grows exponentially, that means it grows quickly. So notice this is a quick growing graph from left to right. It increases quickly. But there are some properties of the graph that we need to discuss. We're going purple. Yeah, we'll go purple. First off, if your function is of the form a to the x, just a regular old a to the x, it will always grow through the point 0, 1. Because what's a to the 0? 1. Okay. And it will always go through the point 1, comma a. Remember, A is the base. Those two colors together, I really want a peanut butter and jelly sandwich for some reason. Doesn't that look like peanut butter? Jelly? No? Anyone heard of peanut butter and jelly? No one. Okay. Also, there's this other thing in common. Notice as we go from uh, towards negative infinity, the graph gets closer and closer to the x-axis, and that forms a what type? Horizontal asymptote. So we have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. Horizontal asymptotes. When your base is bigger than 1, the graph increases. So our base is 2, which is bigger than 1, it increases. If your base is between 0 and 1, it decreases. And actually, as it turns out, it's just a reflection over the y-axis. So this is if your base is between 0 and 1. Uh, let me rewrite that. But it's going to have that shape, that sharp increase for A bigger than 1, a sharp decrease if A is between 0 and 1. Okay. Our next two examples, we take this graph and move it around. So... This, again, comes from the beginning of chapter 10, which everyone totally remembers. So, here it comes. 
Sketch the graph of f of x equals 2 to the negative x. So I'm going to right here draw in regular old 2 to the x. And as we just said, it went through the points 0, 1, and 1, 2. We could totally plot points again. We can pick our negative 2 to 2, but they want you to learn this by transformations that we did in 10, 1 to 10, 3. When you negate the variable, that means you're switching all the x-coordinates from, uh, from positive to negative or negative to positive. So for instance, this point's sort of boring. If you negate 0, what do you get? 0. So where does this point go? No, it doesn't go anywhere. It stays at 0, 1. One two will now go to negative 1, 2. So you negate the x-coordinates. Negative 1, 2. So as it's going to turn out, if you were to plot this, again, keeping in mind that there's a horizontal asymptote there. Oh, this is hard to do when you can't see where you're going. Oh, it's like why I shouldn't drive at night. You'd get that graph. In other words, when you negate the x, it reflects over the y-axis. If I were to give you this graph right here, if you didn't know anything about the function, what would you say the... What could you tell me about the base? It's... between 0 and 1. Well, let's look at the original function now, 2 to the negative x. How could you rewrite 2 to the negative x? 1 over 2 to the x. And that's the same thing as 1 half to the x. So notice, we just showed our bases between 0 and 1. So we should have expected our graph to decrease from left to right. But we did it in terms of transformations as far as just take the original graph of 2 to the x and reflect it over the x-axis. Excuse me, the y-axis. f of x equals 2 to the x plus 1 minus 4. So again... There's the point zero one, point one two. We're going to move the entire graph, and as we did before, wherever we move these two points, the entire graph does the same. What happens to the function? What happens to the graph when you add one to the variable? moves left one. So the graph's going to move left one. And then when we subtract 4 from the function, where does the graph move? Down 4. So we're going to take each of these points, move left one, and then move down 4. So, 0, 1 moves left one, and then down 4. Left 1, down 4. 1, 2, same deal. Left 1, down 4. So 0, 1 moved to negative 1, negative 3. So if the uh, asymptote was at y equals 0, and we moved down 4, where's the new asymptote? Give me an equation. 
y equals negative 4. So please, when you're doing transformation of exponential functions, make sure you move the asymptote as well. So the graph itself, again, starts close to that asymptote and goes to those two points.